Thank you, sir. What does he bun yet? Mm. And you always get blue in my face. Nice. Hello, YouTube. Welcome, world. Hello, world. Um, we focus on beginners in this space. So we talk about things in very simplified terms. If you're a crypto head, it may sound like I'm dumbing things down a lot. That's on purpose. Because most of the people that are part of our community are over 50. And they do not want to hear the words decentralization protocols to be able to complexify their life more. Um, we're going to try to speak in simple terms. So the difference between... So first of all, let's just start off from the very top, right? Money is just a value exchange mechanism. And if, 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 you, if you haven't watched it, please go back and watch our talk on how crypto and money is love, right? Because what we do is we go out into the world, we do something that adds value to people's lives, and, those, and that's you showing love for those people, right? Whatever you do. Those people love what you do so much, they're like, hey, I have some hard-earned love, I'd like to give back to you, and you can put it wherever you want, right? And we go, thank you, I love you too, thank you. And then we take it, and then we put it into different asset classes to store it in a way so that later on in life, when you need love back, maybe, you know, you're older, or you want to buy something, or you want to take care of your kids, whatever, you want to show love to yourself or other people, you take that money, and you spend it, and you give it to somebody else who's adding value to your life. That's the value exchange mechanism of money and crypto. So in simple terms, crypto is, so even before we get to crypto, then what we do is we, we take it, and we're supposed to store it in dollars or money, but we know what's happening to that. They're just printing it out of infinity. Well, we have to go work hard for it. There's somebody who just types it into a computer system, an SQL server on um, a central bank, and they get to print hard-earned money while we spend our time for it. So what we do is we say, okay, well, I'm going to take it and I'm going to put it somewhere where I'll take the risk of buying an asset with the intention that when I invest my money into this asset, the world has not woken up to the true value of this asset yet. And because you're taking the risk of putting your hard-earned money and love into a space before everybody else, later on when the world wakes up to the value, then the world owes you back some love because you, you supported something that the world really needed but they didn't know, right? In that process, we have a few different as asset classes that we can look at, right? We have bonds, which is debt, and those are the... That's basically the whole game. Debt is the whole game. Money is debt. Everything is debt. Everything is based on debt. We have stocks, which are a representation of the debt that companies have nowadays. We have real estate, which is physical, actual assets. We have commodities, which is like everything in this room is built from commodities, physical, real value. We have now crypto. So what's crypto? Cryptocurrency is a bit of a misnomer because it's, it should be called crypto assets or assets. It's a new way for us to add value to the world and store our money somewhere, our love somewhere, in a way that the world hasn't woken up to yet. And we're the early birds later on, two, three, four years down the road, when the world really wakes up to the value of this thing, we will be orders of magnitude higher than where we are today. So that's the cryptocurrency space. It's an asset. The same way that, you know, house is an asset and a car is an asset and shoes are an asset. Now we've just digitized that process. And for beginners, it's a little hard to conceptualize that, right? Because it's like, why is this digital piece of land selling for more than Finn's Beach Club? An empty piece of digital land sold for more than the biggest, one of the most biggest, most biggest, most biggestest and the successfulest uh, beach club in Bali, right? That's happening because the world is now transitioning to a space where locality as a concept is going to disappear. It's already happening. I mean, we're all working from Bali, like, it, you know, we can work across the world. But even more than that, physicality as a concept is going to get kind of muddy. So we have friends who are building XR technology, which means extended reality, where they're going to take the digital world and manifest in the physical world. In the physical world, we're tokenizing the physical world and uploading it to the digital world. So the digital and the physical will become one. All the different places will become one. You'll be able to pop into existence anywhere in the world effectively. And you won't be able to tell, like within eight years, you won't be able to tell 
if the person's really there or not, and you'll have to kind of like do this and be like, oh yeah, you're not actually here. That's where the world is transitioning. And it's so jarring to us to think about it like that. We're like, this just, 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 just doesn't make sense. To the youngins, we're like, yeah, that makes sense. Like, you know, we've been living in metaverses, World of Warcraft and Halo. Like, my, that's my metaverse, Halo. Um, but that's where we're headed. So there's this asset class called cryptocurrency. First of all, it's not a mode of freedom, like I've said a million times. It's called block chain. Blocking you and chaining you does not give you freedom. Unless we build it, unless the we's who are building these projects build the modality of a free operation of the world. So in this process of the transitionary phase, what's happening is the dollar is dying and all the world's currencies are based on the dollar. And actually every single asset in the world is denominated on the dollar. So if the dollar is dying, all of our assets are dying. Real estate did not go up 20% last year. The dollar went down 20% in value. So if your real estate went up and dollar went down, you barely broke even. Bonds, it's a, that bonds are a joke these days. They're giving you 2.5% with a 20% inflation, realistic 20% inflation. So you're losing 17%. Okay, so real estate's not doing well. Bonds are not doing well. Stocks, unless your stocks went up 20% since last year, which they almost certainly didn't. We're losing money there. Even crypto, in the, you know, since last year, has tanked off of a cliff. The only thing that went up from since last year was the dollar. Right? But wait, you're saying the dollar is dying? Well, where did the dollar go up and everything else go down? Because there's these waves that happen where these asset classes pump. When they start printing dollars, those dollars flow into these asset classes and the asset classes pump. Crypto pumps, stocks pump, real estate pumps, everything pumps. And then when they, they like slow down the spigot of printing money, the money flows out of these risky assets and flows back out to the dollar, to safety, right? And if, if, if this is all new to you, please go back and watch our talks. We've described these dynamics in very detailed stuff. After this meeting, please join our group and we have all the stuff there. So in that process of the, re, of the world based on dollars and currencies dying, we think, okay, if they're printing 20% they printed 20% of the money supply last year and 20% the year before that, you know, in, in, depending on which numbers you look at. Some people say 20% in the last four years, some people say 20% in each year. Let's just go with 20% in the last two years, right? Sorry, not four years, two years. We have $100,000, that means we have $80,000 of purchasing power left. But there are sovereign wealth funds with trillions of dollars of money when they have trillion, a trillion dollars, they lost $200 billion of purchasing power. And they know this. You know, Michael Saylor picked this up a long time ago and transitioned all of his money into the space to be like, no, you're not gonna, you're not gonna take my purchasing power. That transition that's happening is being called the Great Reset, you know, whatever you wanna call it. In that process, the 1.6 quadrillion dollars, 1,600 trillion dollars, 1.6 million million dollars need to move to a space where they're not based on the dollar. And we are an asset class that's today at what, like half a trillion or something? So we got a long way to go for this asset class to grow. And we're early enough to take risks now on the right stuff and hold it and later on when the world needs it, we'll give it to them for 10,000% gains, you know, that's not a, that's not a uncommon number in the, in the space. The smart money knows this. They know these guys and girls got here early because they, they, we don't have to follow regulations. We don't care about regulation. We just pull the money out of the bank and dump it in because we're crazy. They have to have regulatory structure in place for them to move their, you know, trillion dollars into a space. They have shareholders to be holding to and stuff. So what they've done is they figured out ways to trick us and to convince us into not buying the stuff that they know they're going to build the future of the world on. Or, or we buy it at the wrong time, like we're all going to 100K in December, right? Who convinced us all that? All that? Who made us hallucinate that we're going to 100K? They did. They control the media, they control the narrative, they control social media, they control everything, right? On-chain an analysis is our way of being able to get raw data that is not as 
manipulable, manipulatable. It is manipulatable, but it takes a lot of money to manipulate on-chain data because this is raw data off the blockchain. So they figured out ways to start manipulating this data too. So we're going to go through that. I know Cyril mentioned that. Um, so what is on-chain data? Let's even talk about that. The good thing with crypto is a lot of the blocks, most of the blockchains are publicly available blockchains. So we can literally go read every single transaction that's happening, how many people are using it. We can run statistical analysis on it to be able to see views on the market which are not being told to us in the media and so on and so forth. So using this, I knew we're not going to 100K against all of YouTube, right? And we got people out early because the data just didn't match up and we're, we're gonna go through what we looked at. This is one of our secret weapons when it comes to this whole space. If you understand the nuances of how they're manipulating the data and then you read through that and you build a bigger picture, it allows you to make decisions from statistical data rather than from the narrative that's being painted because the narrative is always wrong. If the average person, the rule is if the average person knows it, it's wrong. Right now the average person thinks we're going down, then we're not going, I mean, we're gonna have a dump now because China's, you know, China and Taiwan are gonna have a little skirmish because Nancy Pelosi's showing up or something. We, we are gonna have another dump, but that dump does not mean we're going to zero. That dump is just there to con convince you again, get rid of this stuff. Solana's being hacked as we speak, get rid of Solana even though it's on the World Economic Forum's website as the thing that they're gonna to use to build the future of the world. They can pause the blockchain, get rid of Solana. Oh, USDC is being hacked, get rid of USDC, go to USDT. So there's, you know, there's, there are things that they're doing constantly to convince you to get away from the good assets, right? So in, in this whole process, please take away what resonates with you. How do you see the world? How do you see crypto? How do you see all this stuff? And then the point is for you to start building a mental model that allows you to understand this space on a, in a deeper way. So now, can we please pull up just the on-chain activity dashboard? So the, when we're talking about value, right? We said money or assets are as valuable as the value that's added to people's lives. So that's the only function of money, otherwise money is useless. You know, it's just paper with ink on it. So we then have to calculate, okay, what do these things even do? Like what value do they add to people's lives that everybody wants them? That it went from eight tenths of a penny to thousands to 70,000. Eight tenths of a penny to 70,000 in, in 13 years? What does this thing do? What is the value being added? The value being added, let's just talk about Bitcoin. Can you please open up? Uh, BTC? Yeah, this, 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 this. And then also the uh, market tops and bottoms. Open that up in like a new place. Um, what value does it add, right? The value that Bitcoin, first of all, what does Bitcoin do? Nothing, it just exists, it moves. The only function, the only technical functionality of a Bitcoin is to pay for a transaction fee to move. It like literally cannot be coded to do anything else. But it's kind of like gold, right? What does gold do? Nothing. You can like hit people in the head with it, it's pretty heavy. You can't eat it. It's completely useless. It's just limited, so we like it. But it just exists and it moves. It's a, it's a storage mechanism of value. And that's really valuable to us because we know central banks can't print gold. Bitcoin's even better than gold because when, when the demand for gold goes up, the supply goes up because miners mine more gold. We, we have, we're, we're, mining, we're gonna be mining gold. But when the demand for Bitcoin goes up, the supply stays the same and every four years the supply drops at the Bitcoin halving, right? So it's a, what Bitcoin does is it stores people's value. It stores people's love in a place where governments can't steal it so that later on, when you need that love back to yourself, Depend, you know, make, making sure you leave a four-year timeline to let the process play out at least. There will be more love for you to get back. I don't like to guarantee things, but that's as close to guaranteed as we can get it, okay? So that's really valuable to us. I, it's a place I can store my money and like nobody can mess with it and no government can take it from me and, and take that with a grain of salt. But let's just say it's a place where I can put my money in a safe place that's limited that's really valuable to people. So how do we conceptualize and calculate that value, right? 
Before I go into this, you need to understand how value models are changing. In the past world, long time ago, the only value was farms, land. You know, feudal times, land was like pretty much the only value. Sure, there's to be people were pulling out some iron and some commodities and they were processing it, but the vast majority of value was the farmland. How much food can you produce? Because food was the most important thing for everybody. Then somebody comes along and goes, I'm going to take this piece of land and I'm going to put some machines inside. And though this piece of land with some machines inside is going to be way more valuable than 1,000 acres of your land. And the landowners went, you're nuts. That's not how the world works. And that was called the Industrial Revolution, where value shifted to goods you could produce. And then that slowly transitioned into a world where services became super valuable. So the world we've lived in up until 2000, 2000-ish, was a world where the only thing that was valuable was either owning physical land with real estate or farms or whatever, or producing goods and services. That's it. And with those, the value is easy to calculate. Okay, well, how many goods do you, do, you, do you produce? What is the value to people? What are people willing to pay for it? What is your rate of growth? So I can calculate how many goods you're going to be able to produce in four years in a linear way. Because you'll, you know, you'll produce one car, two cars, 50, 100, but it'll kind of go in a linear manner because you have to grow these things, scale these things on a certain scale. Then the internet comes along and the person goes, screw your buildings. I'm going to set up a little computer right here. And this one computer is going to be more valuable than your giant buildings and land and all this stuff. And people went, you're nuts. What do you mean? The A with a circle around it is going to be more valuable? And you go, yeah, watch this. So they set up Google, Amazon, Facebook, Uber, Tinder, right? Tinder doesn't produce anything. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a network that connects people. Facebook is the biggest social media company, but they don't produce social media. Uber is the biggest taxi company. They don't own any taxis. Airbnb is the biggest hotelier. They don't own any real estate. So wait, what happened? Like, so you're telling me the real estate owners are less valuable than the, somebody who doesn't own any real estate, but yet they're the biggest? So what happened? The value models transitioned to value models that were network-based value models. And that follows Metcalf's law. Anybody who's looked into this space, you would, please Google Metcalf's law. What Metcalf's law says is the value of a network of people connecting together grows exponentially. Every time you add one person to the network, the number of connections they can make to other people grows by the square of the number of people who are being added. So it's exponential growth. In simple terms, what it means is networks, they don't go like this. They go like this. That's why Google, you know, Amazon went from $160 or something down to $6 in the dot-com collapse. And then it went from $6 to $3,500, like in a straight shot. And people were shocked. They were like, this is impossible. It has to crash. It has to. No. Network. Amazon's a network. Networks behave differently than goods and services producing companies because networks become more and more valuable. The more people that use Google, the more value we add to it, the more value it gives back to us. This space, crypto space, is here to turn everything into a network. Everything, okay? Everything is going to become a community. Like, I'll give you an example. We have mines that pull out copper from the ground. We are tokenizing those mines, breaking them up into little pieces, digitizing them, registering them as a security, so the SEC gets off of our back, and then allowing everybody across the world to be able to buy the tokens. So it's becoming a network of people who are all owning these mines. And the network of people, because they see the value in it, they will speak about it. Now the value grows, right? Marketing, we have infinite marketing. The more people we have come in, the more the people speak about it, the more marketing gets done, so on and so forth. We still need marketing, like it's really good. Um, but the network itself has value upon itself. Why am I saying all this stuff? The, what makes Bitcoin valuable is the network that's behind it, is the number of people using Bitcoin to do what they want to do and transacting with other people. Right? So we can then calculate, okay, well, use, okay, let's, let's look at how many people are transacting. I like how you put beautiful stuff in the background while we're talking and stuff, you know, this is great. 
We should have shots of Bali. So this is how many people. This is the data. The, the data. It's the core on-chain data. This does not require $10,000. You can sign up for $40 yourself a month and look at this data. So this is the supply of Bitcoin growing, which is important because less Bitcoin means more value. This is the issuance of it. Doesn't really matter. Can we go down, please? This, this is a good metric because it tells you when was the last active time that a coin moved. And this is one plus years. This is a really good metric because when the, the bottoms are there, old coins don't move. Because old coins were smart enough to be like, we're not selling these coins, we're holding them. When the top is there, all the old coins move because the old the smart money is older and they will sell it to the retail who's rushing in. Bottoms, it goes up. Tops, it goes down. Guess where we are? Top. Which means we're close to a bottom. I know this sounded like wordsmithing. Basically, this is, this, is, this is telling us that we are closer to the bottom than we are to the top of Bitcoin price. How about that? Right? And then when we start to see this curve, and this started to curve in about February, right? February of 2021. So well ahead of the top, this starts to curve. So it's a, it's a precursor signal. Let's go down, please. So this is the number of active addresses. This is great because this tells us how many addresses are actually using Bitcoin. So hmm, it's interesting. This is this is 2021, right? Uh, no, don't, 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 don't zoom in, please. This is 2021. This is what a bull run looks like. Uh, this is not what a bull run looks like. This is a fake out. What price is going back up to a top and is kind of recovering. We're at the same price as we were before, but the usage isn't there. Mm, something is off. So when I was seeing this data develop, you know, we sold here, and then we got back in some like in this range, and between here and here, I was like, this data just doesn't look right. It doesn't look like natural data. It look, first of all, it looks manipulated because natural data has this kind of variance. This is too orderly. But secondly, active addresses are at this level and prices at this level. How does that make sense? If people are not using it, then it's not valuable. Then why is the price going up? That was because Wall Street launched an ETF right here at the very top. They had to launch a product. So they pumped in billions and billions of dollars of their own money. Hundreds of billions of dollars. No, double digit billions of dollars of their own money and hundreds of billions of dollars of our money. And God had convinced us we're going to 100K here. Are we though? This looks like going to 100K. This doesn't. Okay. So we're starting to see the scam a little bit. Let's go down, please. This used to be a great metric. Number of addresses with non-zero balance. Up until back here, we're like, wow, this is a great way of seeing how many people are using the space. From here, algorithms took over. Okay, and we're going to look at this later on. But you spoke about uh, shrimps, Cyril. This is whales disguising themselves as shrimp, right? Because they realize we can just watch the whale numbers and we're gonna look at the whale numbers. I was just sitting there watching the whale numbers. As soon as the whales turned, I'm like, bye-bye. I'm gonna go with the whales. And when the whales didn't come back, we could see that. So it's still hard for the whales to fake it because either this metric shoots through the roof because whales have hundreds of thousands of Bitcoin, millions of Bitcoin, or the whale numbers go up. So you'll see, you will see some confluence in the data, but it's being manipulated. But this is, this is how many addresses even just have any Bitcoin inside of them, right? Don't trust it too much. That's just, that's just the, um, the thing. Number of new addresses is pretty good. Number of new addresses, like how many new people are signing up for wallets, right? Because crypto is stored in wallets and those are addresses that we can all see. New addresses tells you pretty well, are, is there a lot of new people rushing into the space? or even whales creating new addresses, doesn't matter. Is there a lot of activity or not? This is what a bull run looks like. This is what a bull run looks like. This is not how you go to 100K, okay? Down, please. More, more. Yeah, this, this like scrolls on its own. Number of transactions. I mean, so now we're seeing, okay, the number of people who have wallets, 
how active they are, and how many transactions are they making, right? Because we, we said the value of these things is how many people are actually using it. So number of transactions, same thing. You can, you can start to see confluence within the data to try, start to tell you, wait, the number of active addresses is low, the number of transactions is low, total transfer volume is hilarious because this tells you literally how much money is it carrying. That's like, if you, if you have to look at one, this one is a really good metric because this is literally what Bitcoin does. It carries dollars for us in different, around in different spaces. Again, here we saw the number of dollars that are being carried were the highest, but the number of transactions were the lowest. So then we went and dug down into the data and we realized, oh, it's whale activity. When here you saw that, and we're going to look at the data in a second, that the transaction switched from $1,000, $2,000, $5,000 transactions to a million to $10 million transactions. Almost all the transactions were dominated by million to $10 million transactions. And those are legitimate whales that are moving. So this dissonance within the data starts to paint a picture in your head. And then you have to dig down deeper to find out why, why that's happening. Okay, let's go down a little bit more, please. This is what the miners are doing, because the miners are the ones who actually control the, the whole space. When you start to see, like this was China shutting off stuff. This is a good sign. This, is, this tends to be a great signal of the end. So you see, hash rate went up. The final dump happens, you see hash rate go down. Hash rate is a simple way of just saying, are miners turning on machines or turning off machines? And when miners are not profitable, they turn off machines. And so the hash rate drops off. It's great because it tells us, okay, if miners are shutting off machines, they're the last people to stop their businesses and become unprofitable. Because remember we said the elites, the smart money, whatever you want to call them, their goal is to pry this supply from your cold, dead hands. So the first people to take it from are short-term holders because they're the finickiest. They don't understand the space. The next step, the next stage is taking it from long-term holders, but long-term holders are very cued into this, so they're, they're not willing to sell at a loss. Then they have to pry the supply from the miners. So this does not only represent the machines being turned off. This also represents now they're not profitable anymore, which means they have to sell their supply to cover their costs. Where are we today? They're, they're shutting off supply. Great. This, this, they tend to be one of the last cohorts to start to sell and shut off stuff because these are businesses, right? This is a great sign. It could go a little bit lower, but fantastic. Okay, so we're not going to go too deep into all the rest of the stuff. You guys can take a look. Um, when it, so the way you can learn about this is like, can you just open one? First of all, watch the Glassnode Weekly Report. That's going to be huge. If you want to learn about the space, Glassnode Weekly Report. They give you the finest details of what these metrics mean. And Blockware Intelligence is one of the few young people that I actually listen to because this whole space is so young that older people don't even know that it exists. Um, Blockware Intelligence is uh, Will Clemente, and he will teach you a lot of this stuff. That's who I've learned from him and Willie Wu and, and Glassnode. So when you look at each metric, yeah, that's okay. You can just open it. There's a description underneath that tells you what the metric means or like a kind of a intermediate level description of what the metric means. Yeah, this is just the average number of transactions, right? So you can, you can read that. You can kind of pick up the details from all these different places. So that was just literally Bitcoin's basic data. But even that has started to give us like, okay, wait, you're telling me there's a way for me to predict a long time ahead of time when the bottom is going to form? And there's a way for me to predict a long time ahead of time when the top is going to form? That the, that the one, one year plus supply starts to curve? Great. These are signals that give us months of runway. Because the other thing is, the, the game is, convince you it sucks. Convince you, do not touch it. Scary. Go, do, go live the rest of life. Nobody was talking about Bitcoin here. I was begging people to buy it here. Nobody bought it here. Convince you, you're going to get rich here. So you buy it here. So they buy it here. We're going to look at the numbers. And then they convince you you're going to get rich here. 
So you put in all your money, and then they take all of your money while it's low by buying it off of you again. That's the game, right? I forgot why I even started that point, but that's the game. Okay, so let's go to... So now, it's important for us to always zoom out. Like, it, the, the, the thing with crypto is it takes hundreds of billions of dollars. Pretty soon it's going to take trillions of dollars for them to manipulate the market the way that they do. Because this is just Bitcoin we're talking about. Then you have, you know, 20,000 other assets who are having their own dynamics play out. So when you zoom out, it, they can't just keep manipulating it for a year, two years. I mean, they're manipulating it constantly, but they can't just pump it fake for years because that would take them a trillion dollars to do and they're not going to waste a trillion dollars of their own money so you saw they pumped it convinced us we're going up got everybody on the ship gave you time to get on pumped it again convinced you you're all going to 100k kept it there for a month and a half so that everybody loads up and they offload on you at the top and then they took all their money back at least at least down to here they took all their money back they put the money into the space pumped it up more made profits made bets that the price goes down, made even more profits, kept you in a state of anxiety like, don't worry, just hang out, don't worry, it's going to go back up. Somebody somewhere said that we're going to 100K while they steal all of our money, right? But if you just zoomed out and you just bought it here, I don't even care if you bought it here, 20,000, 2017, I know somebody who bought it here, looked like an idiot for a year, for three years, turned it, turned, turned it into $1.6 million here. And then everybody, then he's a genius, you know. But buying it somewhere when nobody's looking and selling it when they're telling you that you're going to get rich is a good way of doing this. And then the confluence of all this data really helps. So now let's go to market tops and bottoms. This is a set of indicators that are very good. They're not perfect, but they're very good at... Your brain's starting to slow down again. It's like a Balinese blessing these days. Um, that are very good at telling you market tops and bottoms. They're not perfect, like I said, but the if all of these indicators are saying we're at the bottom, then we're at the bottom, or we're close to the bottom. Remember, we're not trying to call the bottom. We're just trying to call this range, right? Because it doesn't matter if you bought it at 400, 200, 400, 600, 1200, 2000, 3000, 5000. It doesn't matter. It went to 20,000 and then it went to 70,000. You know, trying to figure out the bottom is one of the, one of the mistakes that people make because you're constantly going to be in a state of panic and fear like we are today. And you're not, you're, the bottom doesn't feel like the bottom. But so this one always looks weird. Can we open this one up, please? While that's loading up, this is how, this is, can we turn all these lights off, please? Yeah, but but these lights and these lights, like, I don't know. Is it, what what light? These lights, these lights. Yeah, yeah, those ones. Yeah. Um, nice. Now we can see. It's okay. I'm dark enough. I'll disappear anyway. Don't worry. Like. Uh, Let's, let's open up this one first, because I really like talking about that one, that one first. This is called reserve risk. This is a simple way of understanding how much confidence is there in the market compared to the prices. Even in simpler terms, are we at fantastic prices or are we at way too high prices or are we somewhere in the middle, right? This green zone, like close your eyes and buy prices like rare opportunities that only come around certain times. And, and if you're, and you notice, we've only been at the bottom of this range like twice. Not even COVID pushed us this low. COVID was like, you know, everything's, everybody's going to die from a cough. Now we're at the bottomest, bottomest, bottom of that range. What that means is the prices are so low and the confidence is so high in the space that you'd be a fool not to buy it. Now, if you buy, if you buy, the wrong cryptos and you lose all of your money, like we've said many times before, you, you could easily buy Bitcoin and lose all of your money if you don't have the right strategy, okay? But my point is, if you know what you're doing, the, this signal, which has, and this, this red zone is like 
and get the fuck out, right? And this never failed to call the very, very tops. That's why this was not the top. This was a mid-cycle top. This was a fake out trick. But regardless, we are deep in the green zone, deep, as deep as we can be. One day, probably two years down the road, you'll look back at today and be like, oh, I should have just bet the house on the thing. Would have been a million. Everybody always does that. But cool. Oh, I wish I would have bought it at 3,500. I would have been a millionaire. I went to 70,000. Oh, but where did you buy it? 70,000. Because your friend told you they're getting rich. And then did your friend get rich? No, they broke. They came back down and they got broke with me again. Buy it now. No, it's scary. No. No, but YouTube isn't telling me to buy it. The toddlers on YouTube are telling me not to buy it because it drew a line or something, right? But anyways, the confidence is super high. The prices are super low. Let's go, to the, go back to the... Okay, so that's one thing telling us buy it. I mean, we already saw two other indicators saying, hey, it seems like miners are selling, active addresses are telling us that we need to, we sh maybe should buy it. This is entity adjusted. You can just keep it like this, it's okay. Um, entity adjusted dormancy flow. This is basically telling you, don't worry about the entity adjusted part. This is basically telling you how old are the coins that are moving? Because the older the coins are that move, the more likely it is that smart money is selling because old because the oldest coins they're the most profitable when the oldest coins move so above this line you should be really careful because that means smart money is offloading when the we're, we've literally broken through this range we've never had this on the data this is also why it's very obvious that the manipulation that's going on today is on a biblical scale you know i mean it's down to like putting China into war with Taiwan and sending Russia to Ukraine and destroying the different currencies and creating a currency gap in the middle so that XRP can be brought in to fill in the gap of the global transactional neutral bridge reserve asset, resetting the entire world system, taking all the money from the banks, stealing all the real estate from you, taking all of your assets, everything. That's the level of manipulation we're talking about. Destruction of nations that only happens once a hundred years and that happened in 1929 last time, okay? And all these things I just said happened live 1929 last time. That manipulation definitely bleeds over into this. And this data is showing you guys, okay, we got some weird shit going on. Somebody's doing stuff that's completely unnatural. But in simple terms, we are at the very bottom that it's ever been. You only had three opportunities to buy. Can you move the mouse here, please? $2.20 was one time. Can you move it here? $200, $211 was the next time. $3,200 was the time after that. And that's pretty much it. I mean, you, sure, you could call, call, count this. This is like 3,000 or whatever. 5,000, no, move, move it over a little bit more. It's $3,500, okay? Those are the only times you've had this opportunity. Now, if you bought Bitcoin at $2, you're not in this room anymore. You fly private jets. If you bought it at $3,000, you fly first class. If you bought it at $3,000 again from here, your business. Drones? I don't know. I don't know how you're going to fly, but my point is that thing's telling you, oh my fucking God. Okay, so we got two. We got now four indicators telling us it's a fantastic time. This, see, the value that we accrue to Bitcoin, the market cap, is not the amount of money that's in there. There's a misunderstanding that we say, okay, Bitcoin is at a market cap of half a, half a trillion dollars, $500 billion. That does not mean there's half a billion, half a billion or you know, $500 billion inside of Bitcoin. That simply represents a hypothetical value that if everybody was to sell Bitcoin at today's price today, what, how much money would come out? But logically, that's not how, realistically, that's not how markets work. So as you start selling, the price drops, so you would never be able to sell it at that price, everyone, right? But there's a realized value, which means what was the price where the Bitcoin moved or was transacted last time? That's a realistic value that tells us, okay, so now if you move it here, please. 
So the, the realized value of Bitcoin today is $22,170. So when, when we're below this level, smart money dives in because they know what the actual value of the thing is and what the market says it, it to be today. And when that metric is lower, they buy the shit out of it. This is a statistical representation of that difference. In simple terms, it's called MVRVZ score. Green, oh my God, sell the house and buy it. Do not sell the house and buy it. That's a joke. Oh my God, buy a shit ton of houses. Right? We are deep into the green zone. The same prices we looked at last time, $2, $200, $3,300 and $3,500. We are back into that zone again. Okay, great. So now there's four or five, six metrics. You're going to see so many metrics now that it all starts, they all start to paint a certain picture. Let's go down again. This is a representation of how old are the people who are holding it, right? These are the youngest. These are your like 24 hours and less. It goes up in stages and these are your oldest, like 10 years plus people who are holding the coins. When the tops happen, the real tops happen, local tops. Everybody starts holding it because we're all here. Remember here, we're going to 400,000. People forget here. Here, we were going to 100,000. Here, apparently, we're going to 400,000. Guggenheim is telling you we're going to 400,000. But you see everybody holding it. When everybody's holding it, guess what you do? You sell it. Guess what smart money did? Sold it. Guess what didn't happen here? That is not moon time. I don't understand why people are not looking at this stuff. The people that we listen to on YouTube, these so-called experts, you know, BitBoy Crypto, why are they not looking at this? You can go look at this. I'll download it and send it to you. But my point is, this is what bull runs look like. This is what bull runs look like. This and this are what bull runs look like. This is not what bull, run, bull runs look like. But these lows, these lows, are the buying opportunities. So the Z-score, and this is telling us, and this is a, a ratio, again, statistical analysis, st statistical representation of this same data. Green zone, wow, buy it. Red zone, get out. You can see where it is. Okay. So first of all, any questions for the stuff we looked at? Awesome. Um, let's keep going. This stuff we'll look at on the on the other dashboard. These are my like favorite charts. And then this one. The PL, this one and that one. So PL multiple. This is a representation. I'll be honest, I don't understand it. What I've like what I've looked at it a hundred times. I still don't fully understand how this guy's doing this. He's looking at something about miners, like, but point is green, buy, red, sell. We are on the green. Okay, something about miners and data. Like, I don't know everything. Like, I've only spent 10 years learning it and I don't know this stuff. Um, this is a good one. How many people are in profit? Because remember, when nobody's in profit, convince you that it sucks. So smart money can buy it because nobody's in profit. When everybody's in profit, convince you you're going to get very rich and they start taking the profits and sell it. And we're going to look, look at this on the greed dashboard. But the point is, Addresses and profit, ent entities and profit is a little bit better. Entities is just because addresses can be, t many addresses can be tied to one entity. So the entity adjusted data is more important, but that's also why they charge you an arm and a leg for this data. Same thing, entity adjusted. We're low, we're not completely in the like super unbelievable buy zone. So this could go lower for sure. I think this is going to go lower by September, between now and September, because there's there's a lot of stuff coming. If you feel like FOMOing into the market, it's, it's funny that you see how the room filled up. Like we just did this. We do this every week. When Bitcoin was at what, like 20K? No, it, yeah, it was like bottomed out. This room was empty. The moment it pops, the room fills up. And the moment it goes to like 50, 60, this room's not going to have enough seats. We're going to need to get an auditorium. We'll meet in Denpasar, 500 seat theaters. That should be a signal to you. When everybody around you wants to buy it, get rid of it. But the point is, this will probably go lower until September, okay? This is a really good one. This is a really good one. And it's visually pleasing to my eyes. 
This is a representation of how many short-term holders are holding supply and profit and how many long-term holders are holding supply and profit and loss, right? So can you, can you move the mouse here, please, right at the end? Yeah, wherever, it doesn't matter. It was, you just gotta move the mouse around a little bit or bring it here or wherever, like, well, I was just doing it a second ago. Oh, shit. Okay, I guess we're doing it there. I shouldn't touch things. Um, this is basically, this is short-term holders and profit. Let's zoom back out, please. Reset zoom. This is really good because you know how many short-term holders are in profit and how many short-term holders are in loss. No, this is... Yeah, this is the profit. This is the loss. No, this is the loss. Where is it? Yeah, no, this is the loss. This is the profit. Okay. And this is how many long-term holders are in loss and how many long-term holders are in profit. Okay, now, if we go out to here, you can see we have a massive amount of long-term holders sitting on losses. But you know what they're not doing? They're not selling. Because we don't care. Like, you're telling me something's going to go... 20x, 2,000% in a year, and then now it's down 50, 60, 70%. Who cares? Amazon went down 96%, and then it went thousands of percent up. You know, tens of thousands of percent up. Same way, the long-term holders are sitting on losses right now. Short-term holders literally have no profit. There's almost no short-term holders in profit, which is normal. Almost all the short-term holders are in a loss, the long-term holders are in the most amount of profit, and there's some long-term holders at loss, but they're not selling because you're not, you're not prying the supply from my cold, dead hands. Now, what you see is, you see these metrics right, right, you see these metrics rise up at the bottoms. Can we, can we move the mouse, please? And you see this, see the long-term holders? They dump on the short-term holders. So the short-term holders go up at the tops because they're convinced that they're going to get rich. And, and this was from, can you, put, can you move the mouse here? That was from 11,000. They started dumping from 11,000 to 70,000. That's them getting out early because they don't care about calling the tops. But when long-term holders start to curve down and you see them in maximal profit, no, no long-term holders at a loss, they're going to take the money. They're not worried about catching, you know, I'm going to get rich and catch the very top. That's us. They take your money and then they leave you in loss. Okay. Oh, no, sorry. This was profit. Sorry. Short-term holders were in profit. And guess what they didn't do? Take it. They didn't take it because, you know, you're like seeing a number on a screen and you imagine it's your bank account and you think you're making money. Remember our psychology rules? You don't make any money when it goes up and you don't lose any money when it goes down. Those chickens are counted the day you sell it, okay? So, hypo, so hallucinating that, that you're getting rich, you're not getting rich. Guess what you're getting? You're getting poor. And guess who's getting rich? Long-term holders. And then what did they do? They started dumping. They, they dumped a little bit from here, but then they just went into loss. They don't care, but they're not taking massive losses. They're taking a little bit of a loss there. You know who's taking all the losses? Short-term holders. Short-term holders are somebody who holds less than 155 days. Long-term holders are somebody who holds longer than 155 days. But you should be investing with the mindset that I'm here for the three-year, right, right now, a three-year timeline. If you can just literally sit in the right assets in this space for four years, the magic happens at least once, maybe twice. But people don't have the patience because, you know, I want to get rich yesterday. When Lambo, when Moon, when weird things that youngins say. Okay. Okay. So that's market tops and bottoms. What is this telling us? It's telling us this is definitely not a top. It's not a full-on bottom. It's kind of, no, actually, yeah, that counts as a bottom, yeah. Long-term holders in a lot of loss. 
Long term holders in a lot of loss. Long term holders in a lot of loss. Long term holders in a lot of loss. Great. Looks like we're close to the bottom. Okay. Now, we didn't open all of them. Can we go to, can we go to my, my dashboards? This is actually a really good way. I'll, I can give you the logins to this if you want. You can go in and you can pick the data and you can build your own dashboards and see how you want to you know, consolidate data and stuff. We need to open futures, balances, smart money. Uh, that's it. And then also, can you scroll up, please? Like on this page? Yeah, well, yeah, that's good. No, no, don't close this. Just, just scroll up to the top. Like the very top. And then open up Workbench. And then Insights. No, just, just like another page that's insights. Man, we gotta get you a gaming laptop. Like Apple's not conducive to this. Oh, yeah, actually the, the the new A1 Macs are crazy. That's so articles. Um so <clears throat> It's dead. It's, it's dying slowly like all of us. I know. It was good while it lasted. Bobby, Bobby was good. Let's all take a moment of silence for the babe. Hallelujah, Jesus. Okay. Alhamdulillah. Um, that was just the the the, the data that they give you, then you can go in and build your own views on this stuff and then start to build a bigger picture. So, can we please go to the psychology first? Because that's my favorite. Everything is psychology, right? If the game is convince you that we're going to zero today, the only way they can do it, literally the only way they can do it is to make one number go up and down. If you're, if you, if you're holding crypto, you'll have a dollar figure of your portfolio. And if the dollar figure goes down, you become a worse human being. You become fearful and angry and all this stuff. Can we just pull up the Wall Street cheat sheet because we got some new people in the, in the crowd? Just sneaky hint. I knew you were gonna know. Um, everything is a mind fuck. This whole space, the only thing they can do to you is to psychologically manipulate you into pulling the money out of your bank and handing it to them. They're very good at this game. They've been playing this game for thousands of years. They did this with a tulip mania 500 years ago. They convinced people tulips were worth five years of pay. And then the whole game got thrown off. You know? So what is the psychological game? We'll quickly just go through that so that this, this will make more sense. The whole game is make the number in your portfolio go up, convince you that you're getting rich, put you in a state of greed so you don't sell it, and then they take your money while the prices are high and then drop the price of these assets so your portfolio number goes down, convince you you're going to lose all your money. You're sitting on 50, 60, 70% losses. You think this, this will never come back. I just want my 30% back. And you sell them this asset that they sold to you at 70,000. You sell it, sell it back to them at 15,000. You're probably going to sell it to them at 12,000 coming up. That's it. So the only thing they're doing, is they're psychologically manipulating you using one number on a screen. And this is the game. This is called Wall Street Cheat Sheet. This is so basic, Wall Street beginners are taught this. This is how they steal all your money. Scare you and put you in a state of depression and anger for how much money you're losing today. China will attack probably here. Oh my God, 12K Bitcoin, whole, collapse, whole space is collapsing. Then when it returns, you won't believe it. You'll be in a state of disbelief. Once you're stuck in a state of disbelief, it'll pump even more. Then you'll go from a state of fear to a state of fear of missing out, FOMO, and you'll buy it here. And then they'll dump it, and you'll probably sell it here. 
If you don't, fear of missing out, fear of losing money, fear of missing out, fear of losing money, fear of missing out. But if you make it through this tumble dryer, then it will disappear. Right? Um, here, you will start to get optimistic. This is like 20K Bitcoin last time. Okay? Remember, smart money started dumping from 11K on you. 20K Bitcoin, oh my God, look, I went from here to here. I think there's hope in this space. You'll get greedy. Start to believe it. Oh my God. Uh, these are different things. But this is, yeah, this is actually a better representation because basically you'll get greedy here. You'll think you're a genius here. You'll, you know, tell everybody to join here. You're going to 100K here. And then when it dumps, you're, you're high because you're like, I just made a million dollars in like 40 seconds. I'm the smartest human being ever. Mom, I'm rich. Quit your job. All this stuff. And you'll be high off of the money that you think you've made. And then the smart money starts dumping on you. Okay? And then you will be complacent because you're like, no, 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 no. Every time it goes down, it comes back up. It does. It might take four years, but you're not going to last four years, are you? It's going to do this. You're going to stay complacent. This was, okay, this was November. It, th this happens on the three-month scale, six-month scale, yearly scale, and four-year scale. This is fractal. In the zoomed out view, you could say this was May, and we had a slight difference where the, the, the December high was higher than the, than the May high. Normally it's lower, but again, manipulation. But May, we're going to 400K. Don't sell it. Oh my God, we went to 30K. I wish I sold it at 67,000. Oh my God, we're back up to 69K. Sell it now. No, we're all going to 100K. Okay, so you're complacent. You just don't want to take profit because you think you're going to miss out on the money because you think you're making all this money, but you're not making any money. January, anxiety. No, January, complacency. February, anxiety. March, oh my God, this can't be happening. Luna, oh, what the fuck? What did they do to Luna? Oh my God. Oh shit, three arrows capital. Oh my God, what happened to this space? How dare they do this to me? Oh my God, I've been exposed to the medium. and Panic, panic. Fuck, 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 fuck. I hate everything in my life. And guess what, not, guess what you're not going to do? Buy anything because you're depressed. That's the whole game. It all happens from just a number on a screen going up and down. So how about this? How about this? How about this? I just don't look at the number. I just don't even open the... I only open my portfolio when it's up, when I need to take some money out. And then even if I look at it, I look at one number and one number only. How many assets am I holding? Right? If I call it houses or bars of gold... What matters is how many bars of gold are you holding? It doesn't matter if the price fluctuates, it's gold, right? So right below that number is the number of how many coins you're holding that's always stable. Nobody looks at that number. I only pay attention to that number. How many XRP am I denominating myself in? I don't care about dollars. Dollars are becoming worthless. They're going to be like rupiah one day, right? I don't care about making dollars. Only time I care about making dollars is when I'm at the top and I need to take it out so I can buy more assets and, I, and I'm denominating myself in XRP. XRP is about to become the global neutral bridge reserve currency. It's guaranteed. It's already done. Wait until you guys hear about it probably in six months, within six months. Six months to out to middle of 2024. Sorry, can we go back to the, the point? This is a tangent we shouldn't spend too much time on otherwise I'll never shut up. So this is a chart of how you're feeling, right? These are charts of how you're feeling. They never asked anybody an emotional question. Who are you? This one's closer. Thank you, Basha. Thank you. I can't have my own vapes, otherwise I'll like get addicted. So I have to have like friends holding vapes for me. Thank you. This is called net unrealized profit and loss. Because remember, your psychology is determined by one thing and one thing only, profit and loss. Uh, so this, this is the, the whole market. And entity adjusted is very important because these metrics look different if you just look at the, the normal stuff. Capitulation, hope, optimism, belief, euphoria on the other side. On the downside, greed, denial, then anxiety, then fear, then capitulation. Capitulation is when you just capitulate. You just say, you know what, 
I don't care, I'll take a loss, just give me whatever money is left back, right? This is how it goes. When there's greed in the market, guess what's going to happen? Somebody's going to take profits. So can we go back and actually open up the short-term holders and long-term holders? You're such a genius, bro. Love you. Okay, so this is long-term holders. Yeah, this is long-term holders. I mean, you don't even have to look at this. You can just see short-term holders would never be in this much profit, ever. Guess who was in an insane amount of profit? Guess who was greedy here? Them. Long-term holders. We are too, but you know, the, mostly smart money. Then they kept us in a state of belief while they offloaded on us. Then they went into a state of, you know, anxious optimism. Or what is this? Yeah, anxious optimism. They went into a state of fear for a moment, but they're still in profit. They're just scared. And they took a little bit of a loss, a little bit of capitulation, but they're not capitulating. They don't sell at a loss. Here's the thing. 100% of anybody who's bought solid assets in this space would have never lost a penny if they just didn't sell it lower than where they bought it. Like, that's just a fact of life. Now, if you threw a dart at a board, you have a 90% chance of picking shitty assets. There's only 10% of this space that are solid assets to do this with, but the people who hold those 10%, we just buy it and go to sleep. We go live our lives because I will never lose money as long as I buy the right stuff, right? But the point is, long-term holders never take a loss. Even during COVID, that's how much loss they took. Beyond that, you can shut the whole world down. I don't care. It'll help Bitcoin over the long term, right? Now let's look at the short-term holders. This is not short-term holders. Short-term holders are always losing money, constantly. They're the ones who are feeding to the pockets of the, of the smart money. Always. This is the break-even line. I'm losing money, losing money. Losing money, scared, barely going into optimism, go back to losing money. As soon, as soon as they go into belief, time to lose some money. As soon as they go into belief, time to give me all your money. Fear, 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 capitulation and fear when you should have been buying it. Go back into a little bit of belief, give me all your money. Lose all your money, lose all your money. Did you, did you become optimistic by mistake? Give me that money, okay? Oh, you just, just guess where you became optimistic? Right at the very top. Guess where you became optimistic? Right here. Right here. Literally, short-term holders became optimistic at the very, 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 very top. And then, back to losing all your money. Okay? So, if you're somebody who feels in this space, I know we're in Bali. Oh, Ubud is a whole other question. If you're a feeling type person, Please put that away. We're all, we all have feelings, okay? But they have nothing to do with investing. Investing and feeling are two completely different universes. You have to be a dead robot to be in this space. Or the, the only emotion I like to feel is detached amusement. It's my favorite emotion. You're like detached. Oh, look, I'm 50% down. <laughs> LOL. Oh, good. I didn't even look at it. I don't even know. I, I know I'm 50% down if I look at it. I don't care. The only time we emote is when we take the profits and then we go party somewhere with the money that we just made. When the cash is in the bank and we're turning it into lifestyle, then we emote. Then we party. Until then, we just sit, hang out. If you know the space, if you know what's going on, if you're holding the right assets, emotions have nothing to do with it. Especially if you're feeling the emotions of the short-term holders. If right now you feel like capitulating, don't. If at these points you're feeling fear, don't, because when you look at the long-term holders, please. Yeah, and get. Back here, the people didn't know enough about it, so they definitely went into a state of fear, but the moment it was time to buy, they came right back into a state of optimism at the bottom. When they start to go into a state of belief, you start to get ready to sell. The moment they go into a state of greed, you go into a state of greed. And greed means taking the money out, right? Same thing. A little bit of capitulation because things dropped off. The space was still a little unsure. I remember in 2017, we were like, okay, this space, they're not going to allow this to take over the whole global financial system. So there was some fear, but 
within seconds came back out to a state of optimism and then went to a state of belief. COVID, same thing. Now, by, by this time, we're all, we're, we're all like, okay, this space is here to stay. As a matter of fact, this space is here to take all the money from everybody in the entire world. And that's not an exaggeration. All of the money in the entire world, all the stocks, all the bonds, all the real estate, all the assets, all the cash, all the currencies, all the digital stuff, we are putting it into the digital space. So by this time, we're convinced that that's what's going to happen. Quickly went into fear, popped back out again, became optimistic, started buying it right away. As it went up, became into, went into a state of belief. The moment to go into a state of greed, start dumping, right? These are the emotions you should be feeling. If your emotional state is misaligned with this, you're playing the wrong game. Don't enter. You will lose all of your money because your emotional state is literally the only thing that is real in this space. That's why it's my favorite. And plus, I, I just love colors. So I just love like rainbow charts, you know? It's like, ooh, blue, money. Ooh, red, don't sell it. Ooh, green, I like this, you know? It's like a game. That's what detached amusement is. I'd like we're amused at how much money we're supposedly losing, but it doesn't matter. We made the money in the first place. Plus, wait, wait, wait. Who made your money? Who made all the money you have? That person sitting in this room, probably really close to you. So like, you could take all the money. You know what I'll do? I'll just make it. Because I am the money. Right? Why, so why be stressed about this? Why be so stressed about, I mean, somebody stealing your money, sure. Somebody hacking you, sure. But you're the money. You're money on two feet. This stuff is just a fake game that try to convince the money to like get into a state where you're not fully enlivened and crushing your own game and making money. Because if you're on this emotional roller coaster, you're not going to be performing well in the rest of your businesses. Okay, can we please? Uh, let's go to, yeah, Wales. Wales is good. Okay, so this is how we start to watch what the smart money is doing, right? Because if we're saying, okay, smart money and the whales have trillions of dollars, and they have to enter it into a space without moving the price, that means it takes them months and years to do that. Because if they just dump a trillion dollars into a market, the price would pump, right? So can we go, please go down to the thousand Bitcoiners? Thousand, yeah, open that up. I love this metric, because this metric gave me all the a lot of the, the data that I needed to prove that we're not going to the moon uh, uh, when everybody was saying we're going to the moon. A thousand Bitcoin is a lot of money today and it's, it's gonna become more and more money. Somebody who's holding a thousand Bitcoin, like true institutions, the ones who are not manipulating the market, who are you know here for the long term, they hold their Bitcoin in like thousand Bitcoin accounts, thousand plus Bitcoin accounts because they don't, because when you look at like corporate asset management setups, which is what I used to do. The structures are set up in a way where having 100,000 accounts just doesn't make sense. The, the admin goes through the roof. The admin cost goes through the roof. So can you please zoom in from here to here? So what they did is they accumulated well ahead of time and almost didn't dump. They dumped a little bit, but this panic, they didn't dump. And Literally, them accumulating is the true bull run. Sorry, so white is the price of the Bitcoin. Orange is the number of addresses holding a thousand or more Bitcoin, right? It's like one-to-one. -one. It was one-to-one. -one. This is what a true bull run looks like. When whales run in, it's, that's the fuel that takes us to the moon. This is not how we go to the moon. There's no, there's no fuel in the rockets. Fuel is money, right? Whose money are you planning? Because you don't make money, you take money. Whose money are you trying to take? They have all the money, so you're hopefully trying to take their money. Well, their money didn't come back. Their money left back here. When, th when this started happening, I was like, wait for it, wait for it. Right here, I got confirmation. Okay, they are dumping hard. The data started to show that they're dumping hard. Great. Get out. Right? They're done dumping. Great. Get back in. Oh my God. They didn't come back get out because everybody's trying to get rich but 
we're all about to become poor. And now, guess what they did? See, it's accumulated again. This is a huge spike. This is, this is a hyper whale accumulating here. Can you see a consolidation of the upper more? It is. It is. Consolidation. I mean, yes, yes. That's, that's how, that's why the price doesn't, so, so could, the question was, could this be a consolidation rather than a purchase of coins? Yes, that's exactly what it is. Because if this, if a purchase of this many coins happened on the, on the, truly happened, the price would just skyrocket. This happening did pump the price a little bit, but they really maintained control of it to make sure that that didn't happen, you know? But so we're going to just look at that in a second. This? Uh, March. March 2nd, 22. Pardon? No, no, El Salvador bought like 150 Bitcoin. Yeah, they, yeah they, that wasn't them. This, this was definitely consolidation. Because this is what natural data looks like. You know, this is not natural data. This, these are also signs of manipulation. That's why this is almost certainly consolidation. So we're going to look at that. But the point is, they consolidated in the background, and then they still dumped to bring the market lower, right? But they still consolidated from, he, they, you know, from here to here, and now they're going to start to curve up again. And the other thing is, they're starting to now move this into smaller accounts to make sure this data does not reflect things properly because the manipulation is getting to that level. But this was so nice for me. This was so nice for me. I just pulled it up and went, guys, this is the reason why we're getting out. Simple as that. You know, the, these were the good old days. The game has completely changed. The good old days. A year ago, ancient times, our ancestors, a long, long time ago in caves, used to trade Bitcoin and with the great data. Right? Okay, now let's go look at, let's go back to the, to the, to the whales. Pardon? Because Bitcoin, why am I only watching Bitcoin is the question. The only thing that matters is the debt markets. Bitcoin doesn't matter. The debt markets, like we always talk about, the debt markets are the broader financial ocean that has all the liquidity inside. The stock market is a derivative of the debt markets. Bitcoin is a derivative of the stock markets. It means it derives its value from the stock markets. All the rest of the cryptos derive their value from Bitcoin. And, and they're all algorithmically attached now. So there's algorithms that are in all 20,000 assets. And what, what the debt markets do, what the stock, that, that defines what the stock market does, that defines what Bitcoin does, that defines what all the little assets do. So we just watch Bitcoin. We don't just, I watch Ethereum too. I'm, I'm just, I don't have time to like go through all this. Stuff. Extrapolate, yeah. So, so, so this is, this is, the precursor to those coins pumping because the way the, the, the way the liquidity flows in is, central bank, banks print it and dump it into the into the financial ocean called the debt markets. That is such a big ocean that it takes time for the wave to propagate through. Usually takes between six months to sometimes like eleven-ish months, sometimes twelve months. Usually somewhere between six to eleven months. And the wave propagates down to the stock markets, and from the and the stock markets rise. That very quickly propagates into the Bitcoin markets, and there and then Bitcoin pumps first because when when things are low, people trust Bitcoin the most. It's the safest place. So Bitcoin pumps first. Everybody trust returns to Bitcoin first. Bitcoin goes up. That's called Bitcoin season. And then once it's up, and then everybody gets convinced, hey, Bitcoin's going up. Let's buy it. Like today. Let's all get Ethereum, let's all get Bitcoin. Ethereum is now interchangeable with Bitcoin. The money then flows out of those assets. When, it, when we rush in, they take our money, and then they put it into these smaller assets. So there's about a month delay between Bitcoin and the large and mid-caps pumping. There's about a month and a half to two months delay between Bitcoin pumping and the tiny assets pumping. So imagine it like a wave propagating from the ocean. It takes a long time. Then it propagates to the sea called stocks. It takes less time. Then it propagates to a little puddle on the beach. Literally, the amount of money that's in crypto is like a little puddle on the beach compared to the ocean of money. And then the front part of the, the puddle 
goes up, that's Bitcoin, the biggest part. And then the, the, the little you know, molecules of water that we call our other cryptos propagate last. And the moment shitcoins pump, it's over. Get out. Okay, you could, line, you could literally line up Shiba pumping and Dogecoin pumping. Dogecoin pumped here. Right here. Shiba pumped somewhere here. You know? Not, not here. Actually, it pumped somewhere around here. Does that make sense? So can we go back to the, to the whale watching dashboard? Let's go, let's go all the way up. Yeah, up. Up more to the very top. This. So this is a metric I made. I just took all the, all the, all the cohorts and put it together. It's a little confusing sometimes. Can you please just, yeah, hold it right there, right there, yeah. So this, this is 0.1 Bitcoin. One Bitcoin. 10 Bitcoin, 100 Bitcoin, 1,000 Bitcoin, 10,000 Bitcoin, right? Now can you zoom in from here to here? Almost all of them are up and to the right. They all dumped down to here. And from there, almost all of them are, are up and to the right, except for... What is this, the 10,000ers? 10,000ers, okay. So this is, this is how you need to see the data, because now they have nowhere to go. There's nowhere else for them to hide. So what used to happen was, and this is, this is zoomed in, but what used to happen was the little guys were actual shrimps. It was the asses of the world, and you could rely on the data. Now, the little guys have become algorithms that are you know, millions and millions of bots that are running that are slowly just scalping little bits of money off of you and they're having you know, algorithm wars between themselves. So now this is all smart money. There's no dumb money left in this space today at all. Like we, like we saw, right? Short-term holders and zero profit, so no dumb money left. Guess what happened as soon as there's no dumb money left? They all started, consol they all started taking on supply. This consolidation that we saw here, where do we see it? Right here. You saw two cohorts consolidate. So they consolidated into 1,000 accounts and whatever this is accounts. 1,000 and 100 accounts, right? But in the background, we're watching them take supply constantly. So now, this is how we see whale activity. Not just the, number, not just the big numbers. We see, okay, wait a minute. If none of us are buying it, who's buying it? They are. And when this happens, that's a signal that six months down the road, we're going to have a completely different narrative. And a year down the road, because again, it takes them a very long time to, cons to take on that much supply at a very slow pace, especially with these microtransactions. But this is telling me a year from now, we're going to be in a completely, between this next year, we're going to be at a completely different space. Now we're all convinced market's going to go downwards. Every average person thinks we're going to fall off of a cliff. That means the exact opposite is going to happen, like it always happens. Great. Buy signal. Because they're buying. When they buy, I buy. Simple as that, right? And there's a lot of different ways to look at this. We're not going to keep going, going down this rabbit hole. Uh, let's go to profits. Uh, no, let's go to futures, actually. Futures, I think, is a game. I mean, one second, one second, one second, one second. So th this is a good metric to look at, like, which way are long-term holders generally going? Are they selling or are they buying? Right? Are they consolidating or are they dumping? So you see long-term holders, they started to dump right here. 50, 50 something thousand dollar Bitcoin. And they dump all the way down as the prices are high. Then as the prices come down, they consolidate. As the prices go up, they dump. As the prices kind of flatline, they consolidate. Now we have, we've seen them capitulate a little bit like we saw. They actually gave up some supply. But in general, when long-term holders are consolidating. So now we're seeing long-term holders net starting to buy. It's about the angle of this, not just the number, because this is total. In, in total, long-term holders have already started to accumulate supply. We've already looked at this stuff in a few different ways. Let's open up the futures, please. Any other questions?
You see, smart money is good too. Uh, yeah, let's go to smart money first. This is smart money. If you want to follow smart money, you follow the whales and you follow literally what the smart money is doing. When, when smart money is at the bottom, this is supply held by smart money. And if it triggers you that I call them smart money, they are the smart money. That's why they have all the money in the first place. When it's low, it's at the top. When it's high, it's not at the top. Right? So how come they knew that this isn't the top? Because in the background, they could, because they don't care about buying it at 70K. They're losing $200 billion out of the trillion dollars each year. They're happy to buy it and hold it because they got 10 year, 50 year, 100 year infinite scale strategies. They're not here for the little fluctuations. But this is telling us, the long term holders are telling us that this is a bottom. Or this whole, this whole thing has been a bottom. The same way, you know, back in the day, 20,000 was the top and all the way down to 3,000 was like, you know, it was ridiculous to buy at that point. Today, 20,000 is the bottom. Next, 70,000 will be the bottom. And then half a million will be the bottom. And then 10 million will be the bottom. And then 100 million will be the bottom 30 years down the road. But $100 million at that point will buy about 100 million rupees worth of stuff. No, it won't actually. At that point, it will buy probably around about $10 million worth of stuff today. But the number will be at $100 million. So they're telling us this is the bottom. They're starting to accumulate. We can actually literally put it on a trend score. Can you zoom into that? Just like the last while. Uh, back, 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 like from here. From here. This is literally a trend score of how big are the entities that are buying and how much are they buying. When it's white, it's a great time to accumulate. This was interesting because large entities actually got tricked into buying at the top two. So we're not, the, you know, we think all the large entities are the smart money. No, there's a lot of dumb, smart, dumb large entities too. But this white is them accumulating really, really hard in large transactions, which is great. That's what we'll do too. If you now go down, please. It's not on this one. Uh, balances. Yeah, balances. This. This. This tells us the size of the transactions that are happening. So now if you put it here, just right here at the end. Yeah, a little bit over. Yeah, right there, right there, right there. 75% of the transactions that are happening are 10 million plus transactions. 75% of the purchases that are happening are 10 million plus transactions. 10% are 1 million to 10 million, still whales. 85% are whales. 100,000 plus, still, you know, rich people per transaction. That's another 7%. So 85, 92%. 92% of the transactions today are happening on the biggest, massivest scale. Whale activities, ladies and gentlemen. Because again, they can't move $100,000 at a time when you got to move $10 million. The admin gets crazy. So when this happens, that's a great sign. Could we please zoom back out? Like reset zoom? No, the, the other one? The gear? Yeah, click it. Oh, oh, uh, sorry, cancel and then double click on the... Yeah, double click. Oh, sorry. Reset. When, when the tops happen, the size of the transaction goes way down. This is little shrimp purchases at the top. When the bottoms happen, and this is, now, now this is also a representation of how institutions and large players have entered the space. This is why back here it was a natural game. It was just us mostly transaction, transacting. Right around here they started to pay attention but they left the space again. But now we've seen this growth of the domination of this entire space by the, by the big money. But the point is, when it peaks like this, is the bottom. Bottom-ish, you know. The 30k, it spiked and their purchases took the prices back up. But even that, this was a fake out because, you know, they pumped in their own money.
But right now, it's not the highest that we've ever seen, by far. Almost the entire space is being dominated by big players, while we're being told not to touch it. So guess what we do? We touch it. We dabble. We take it. Right? Especially because like, I feel a little, you know, Megan. We, I feel a little fear. Great. By my fear. Do you feel fear? And who in this room feels fear in this market? You can be honest, like it's okay, it's Bali. We share our feelings all the time. We heal from it, trauma healing, right? I feel fear. I'm not some like emotionless, dead human. I feel fear. You know where I feel it? Over here. My portfolio is over there. Logins are right there and the computer's right there. I feel it over here. And I go, hmm, process. Then I sit with my therapist and I go, hmm, I feel fear. And he's like, me too. My portfolio's down too. I'm like, yeah, it sucks, right? Should we buy it? He's like, what's the data? Data says buy it. Great, let's buy our fear. Thanks. You know? This is the thing. You should be greedy right now. You should be greedy as fuck right now. I'm greedy. I am buying everything left and right. Like I am just, I'm pulling money out of places which I didn't even know. I'm consolidating assets. I'm taking all my cash flow, I'm getting it ready so I can. I'm just going to buy a shit ton more XRP, I'll be honest. I've never seen a better bet. I'm just going to buy a shit ton more XRP. Within a year, you're going to wish you bought it. But if you buy it and you lose all of your money, that's very common. You could lose all of your money buying it the wrong way, okay? Don't just listen to me and buy it. You will lose all of your money if you listen to me and buy it. I can almost guarantee you that. Because I'm sitting on the other side taking your money. Remember that. That's the game we're playing, right? I mean... This, it's not really a Ponzi scheme. It's, it's va- me- there's 90% of the space is Ponzi schemes. 10% of the space is the next generation of the takeover of the entire human experience. That is not to be undervalued. We're building a completely new universe that children will live in. They're already living in it, that they will not want to exit. Like, he put on the headset, the VR headset. He's like, we're fucked. He was playing a game. I put it on, I meditated, I'm like, we're fucked. Kevin, one of our guys, he just puts it on and just goes into the front menu to select an app. And he's like, oh, we're fucked. We never heard each other say this. These same words came out. We're like, we are so fucked. Because this world that they're building, that we're building, it's going to dominate this entire world. Real estate, we don't need it. I just need this big of a circle to draw around me so I can hallucinate my own reality. That's what we're building. All the money in the world, all the assets, all the value, everything's transitioning to there. You don't like it? Buy a farm. I have a farm, by the way. Up north, if you want to buy a farm, come to the farm. We'll hang out there. Because I'm shit scared of this too. But at the same time, I'm building it and I have a farm. So you got to have all your exit planned out, right? Sorry, getting it back on the point. Can we go to futures now? Yeah, we're going to close off on that one. No, I mean, like, we're, at the end, we're going to go to uh, the dashboard you were just on. Yeah, just pull up futures like that. Um, the, g- the game, the actual game being played. So, think of this, so if you're new, think about it like this. If you took all of the cash in the world, all the money in the world, in digital or physical, it's about $150 trillion. You took all the stocks, it's about $200-ish trillion. You took all the real estate, that's about another $250 trillion. Took all the bonds, government and, and corporate bonds, that's $300-ish trillion depending on who you ask. You take all the cars, all the shoes, all the everything, all the, all the, all the watches, everything. You take everything in the world that we value and you put it in this side. And on this side is a casino called Futures and it has $1,000 trillion inside it. $1. $1,200 trillion inside of it. It has more money, a casino has more money than all the value in the world combined. People don't even know that there's a casino. You know why? Because we're not allowed to touch the casino. You know who plays in it? Our financial managers. They're taking our money and they're playing in a casino called Futures. And this casino is great, right? This is a casino where you can put, you can bet a dollar. And if you win, you can win 
as much as $125 worth of a bet. Okay, so I could bet a million dollars. If I lose, I lose a million dollars. But if I win, I would win as if I bet $125 million. That means if my million dollar bet goes up to $2 million regularly, I would go to $250 million I would get. What you're doing there is you're betting a million dollars, you borrow, it's called leverage, you borrow $124 million from somebody else and you make a bet. That's the casino that's being played, right? That casino runs the entire world. That casino is why the wealthy are so wealthy. And if you're not an accredited investor and if you don't know how to play this game, you're not even allowed to touch it. The only people allowed to touch it are these financial managers who manage to take all of our money at all times, okay? This is the casino. So Bitcoin is not like, first of all, I should, I should put this in front of the puddle, okay? The beach is this casino. Bitcoin is like, Bitcoin and crypto is a puddle on the beach that has a little bit of liquidity inside. The, the casino has more liquidity inside than the, than the actual assets do. And if this is mind blowing to you, this is how it works. It's fucked. They add, at this point, they add zero value to people's lives. The only value they add is to, to, the, to efficiently steal all your money and put it in some rich guy's pocket, okay? So we must watch the casino. This, is a representation of how many bets are being made in Bitcoin, on Bitcoin, denominated in Bitcoin. How many, how, let me say that again. This is how many bets are being made on Bitcoin by betting Bitcoin. Because betting dollars is not as valuable as betting Bitcoin. Because you know, me betting one Bitcoin and winning 10 Bitcoin is way more valuable than me betting $100,000 and winning a million dollars, even though you can buy more Bitcoin with that. So. And this, can you scroll down a little bit, please? Just a little bit, so both of them show up. Yeah, yeah right there, right there. Right, up a little bit. No, like, yeah, so both of these show up. Yeah, there you go. This is how much money is being bet, denominated in dollars. This is in Bitcoin. Could we line them up so that this says two years, goes in? This is what it looks like. When there's massive bets being made, guess what happens? The casino wins, the house wins. Because I just said you can take a million dollars and you can borrow $124 million from somebody. Like that, like you literally don't need to speak to anybody. Somebody will give you $124 million because they know if you make a bet like that, they're almost certainly gonna get your million dollars, okay? When there's a lot of bets being made, at the end, this is 400,000 Bitcoin down to about 200,000. So 200,000 Bitcoins worth of bets were wiped off the, off the table. Same thing in dollars. A lot of dollars being bet, somebody takes it. Not somebody, the house takes it. The people who are giving you that $124 million take it. They're called market makers. They run this whole game. And that's who you're playing against. If you're trying to like short-term trade and beat somebody, you're trying to beat the smartest money in the world who have hundreds of millions of dollars of the best, billions of dollars of the best experts in the world who've come up with detailed 5,000 page strategies to efficiently steal all of your money. And you're playing against them with no written down plan. You're gonna lose all your money, right? But this is a great representation of the final kind of blow off tops. Guess what happened here? A bunch of money got stolen. Not stolen, fairly taken in a market that you entered without, without understanding. Guess what we've seen now? We've seen an absolute giant amount of Bitcoin being bet. This is like half a million Bitcoin or something have been bet in this. And there's not even that much, that much Bitcoin to play with. And half a million of it is in the, in the casino. Guess what's gonna happen next? Boom. Somebody's gonna take the half a million dollar, the half a million Bitcoin. They're probably gonna take it down to about two, well, about three-ish hundred thousand. So another 200,000 Bitcoin will be taken. And so when we say an ETF was launched, an ETF being launched, it, a futures ETF being launched is simply telling you that they launched a way for Wall Street to make bets on Bitcoin in dollars. 
and they did it here, right? They got people to pump in. Can you, can you put the mouse here, please? No, not even there, right here. Right here. No. Oh, it doesn't show the, oh yeah, okay, so seven billion. Can you put the mouse here at the very top? Yeah. 16 billion. So they bet, they got people like us to bet $9 billion from Wall Street on the price of Bitcoin going up because they convinced them that it's going to 100K. And then what did they do? Can you go here, right here? They took $7 billion. Like that. Somebody made $7,000 million. And it's a simple process. I convince you you're going up. I come in. I make a map. First of all, first of all, first of all, here's how I would take all your money, okay? I would buy a million Bitcoin here. Slowly, slowly, so the price doesn't go up. And then I would make a bet that the price of Bitcoin goes up. I make a, I take 100,000 Bitcoin and I make a bet saying if I win, I win a million Bitcoin. And remember, I still have 900,000 Bitcoin that the price goes up. And then I buy a shit ton of Bitcoin right at the very end to make the price go up. Guess what I just got? A million Bitcoin. And guess what you're going to do? You're going to rush in. We are going to rush in and start buying because the prices are high. Okay? Then I convince you we're going to 400,000. Now I still have 900,000 Bitcoin plus I want a million Bitcoin. I have 1.9 million Bitcoin. Okay? Here, I make a million Bitcoin. This, these are just numbers, but I make a million Bitcoin bet that I bet the price goes down. And if I win, I get 10 million Bitcoin. That's impossible, but let's go with realistic numbers. I have 190,000 Bitcoin, and I make a bet here with 100,000 Bitcoin saying I bet the price goes down, and if I win, I win a million Bitcoin. And then I dump my other 90,000 Bitcoin to make the price go down. Here, you're convinced that we're going up and you're all gonna get rich, right? So you're not gonna sell it. I dump the price and I win a million Bitcoin. Plus, I made the money cash from selling from here to here. So I make money, plus I got more Bitcoin. And once the prices are low, guess what I'm gonna do? You're convinced that it's gonna go down, I'm gonna make bets that the price, now I have, you know, one, one million, one point whatever, yeah, one million Bitcoins worth of purchasing power. Now I make the, a bet that the price goes up with 100,000 Bitcoin, and then I go in and I buy 900,000 Bitcoins worth of purchasing power into the market, that pumps it up, I get another million Bitcoin, I bought it here, I sell it here, rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat, okay? That's the game actually being played. And they're barely buying Bitcoin. They're making most of their Bitcoin and money from just the bets going up and down. And this is played at such a large scale that you betting, you know, one Bitcoin, that price goes one way or another, it doesn't matter. They're almost certainly going to take your Bitcoin. But my point is, we are not done falling yet. Right? So we had all this data telling us we're, we're it bottomed out, Great time to buy, all this stuff. But the casino is telling us, no, this is not how this game is played. No way they're going to leave half a million Bitcoin sitting on the table and not wipe it out. So I think the next step is going to be, a, a, it's called a leverage flush, which is, this is leverage flush. It's going to be a massive leverage flush. That's going to be easily the driver. And it'll be like, you know, China attacked or something or some weird thing happened or monkeypox came out or Marburg came out and people are bleeding from their eyes. Like, that will cause this drop. That'll be the final blow off top to be like, okay, that's when I will start dumping that cash that I've been consolidating into the markets and buying it up. In the meantime, I am going to buy more XRP because I don't know when that thing's going to pop. Almost certainly, it's going to pop when this happens. They're going to dump it and explode it so nobody has a chance to get onto that boat. Okay? Plus, like Solana, they want you to get rid of Solana. They want you to get rid of XRP. They want you to get rid of IOTA. They want you to get rid of XTC. They want you to get rid of all the things that are actually going to be beneficial. They want you to go get shit dog ear meme coins and get rich tomorrow, right? Okay, so we're going to close off on how you can learn for free about all this stuff, okay? Can we go to the uh, not on-chain? It was the, uh, the this.
This is how I learned this stuff. One of, one of the biggest pieces. Once a week, Glassnode releases the week on chain uh, data. They release one video, one hour, best one hour you'll spend to learn about the space. Uh, it's free on YouTube. You can sign up for their, the, the account for free and get access to this. If you sign up for the $40 a month account, you will get access to a lot of the data we looked at, but not the very, very important data that, we, that we're using to make decisions. We actually have a group. It's 200 bucks a month, but we take $30,000 of tools and consolidate it down and steal the data and give it to people. If, if, you're a lot, if you want to continue education, but click this, please. This is a newsletter, and it's a video that gets released on their, on their YouTube channel. And you know what's great? Almost nobody subscribed to this. Two and a half million people are subscribed to some fat guy telling you which, which coins to buy so he can get rich. Like, less than 100,000 people are subscribed to this. That's a great signal. Don't, if you're watching people with millions of subscribers, you're being a sheep. People you should watch are in this, like, 50, 20, no, about the 50,000 to 200,000 range. Let's uh, scroll down a bit. More and more and more. Uh, there should be this. Wait, scroll, scroll up. So the, that's the video. You can play the video. This week on chain dashboard. If you sign up for the account, yeah, there's also translations, so you can learn in different languages. This is very important for you know a lot of people who have a hard time understanding English or you know at the speed that we're talking. Click this. Click this. This is all the data that they look at. Some of these will be blanked out when you don't have the right subscriptions, but 40 bucks a month to get all this data or free for you to learn all the important data taken from all the paid resources distilled down into simple English by somebody who describes it better than me. To learn from this is worth this weight in gold. Sorry, worth this weight in Bitcoin. Which is, I mean, even the lightest people, you know, you can get a lot of Bitcoin. Um, this, this is it. This is the description. They'll tell you the price. They'll give you pertinent data. Keep going, keep going. They'll tell you, oh, transaction rate is doing this. That means this. Transaction fees are doing this. That means this. So on and so forth. They'll give you a free education. They're screaming it from the rooftops, and we go listen to the toddlers, the 20-year-olds, who are drawing lines telling us, buy here, don't buy here, and they're not even looking at all this stuff. Okay? So please, 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 in closing, I just want to say, you're playing a game against the giants of the world. The secret we have is that they got to open their pockets at some point. They're losing way too much money to not open those pockets. So by 2023, they're releasing regulations. By 2024, they get implemented. And in 2024, we are going to see a flood of money enter the space. And I mean $100 trillion at least have to enter this space. If you can just last from now until that point, you're going to be one of the shrimp sitting there with a little bucket, which is your portfolio, while a torrent of money. And I mean, the numbers won't even make sense. The same way that eight tenths of a penny to 70,000 just doesn't even make sense to people. The numbers will not make sense for how much money is going to flood in. Just please be educated and knowledgeable enough to pick the right assets, have a good strategy, have a set of data that you use to make decisions, and just wait, okay? You set up your portfolio, forget about it, don't look at it, have a strategy of how to exit, how to take profits. We've taught about this many times. I'm doing a whole series at Park Ubud that for free takes you through my entire paid strategy sessions. I'll give you the document that I charge people for. And you yourself can sit down and fill out a 70-page document with your own strategy. I have a full course, free course, that's already on the website. If you want to sit down with me, there's a $1,000 consulting package that we have. Or just go watch the free course on the website. Take the 10 hours of content from the experts in the space. I'm recreating the course with more updated data that I'm going to post on the website for free again with the document. Go through, fill it all out, educate yourself, have a strategy, have a plan. Then we will... All, we will Whenever this is pertinent, we present this. I even take, whenever I know that this is something that's going to be important for people, I take the content from the paid group and I post it in the free group. So there's no reason 
for you to not access this other than you just wanting to be educated about this place. So that's where we're going to leave off. Any final questions before we close the close this chapter? Okay, someone evangelize for a second. No, keep the recording going. People love this part. The entire world is changing. The, the entire world is changing. Everything. We're, we just reinvented gold. We just reinvented internet. We just reinvented apps. We just reinvented money. We just reinvented real world assets. We just reinvented stocks, bonds, real estate. What you see, what you hear, what you smell, what you feel, what you taste. Elon Musk is building the matrix to jack into the back of our heads so you will hallucinate a reality that will be so far beyond. I mean, I saw, we saw a digital representation of Bali where they're photorealistically scanning Bali and then improving it. And the only thing we could say was, wow, wow, we're fucked, is the only thing you could say. Like, I was even like, man, this is the Bali I would want to go. It's the Bali that I imagined in my head. It's the Bali that the Instagrammer showed me. You know, Instagrammer showed me a Bali, and I went, oh my God, Bali. And then I landed on Kuta Beach in the middle of like off season, just garbage everywhere. And people were like, let me see Bali. And I was like, I just put the phone on the garbage, tiptoed through it, and went, this is Bali. But that Bali, one of the Bali's, that Bali is a way better representation of Bali than Bali. I'm sorry, right? And it's going to be experiential and you'll be able to fly through it like a dragon if you want. We all want to fly. Like the first thing I do in Lucid Dreams is fly. You'll be able to fly through it. You'll be able to meet God through it. You'll have an AI inside of it and an AI that will get physically manifested into reality as well. That's what extended reality is. And that AI will be so much more knowledgeable than humans that you almost will not want to have conversations with humans because we're too dumb. You will speak to God. You already do. Hey, God, book a meeting with this person. Okay, book that 8 p.m. Right now, God talks back like that. Everything is being revolutionized, and you just have to pick one. If you were there when the internet was invented, private jets. If you were there when oil was invented, you own airlines. If you were there when electricity was invented, everything. And we just reinvented all of it. And there's, there's literally people building this shit. We are building it. So you either come along or we're taking everything. Not intentionally. Not intentionally. The world has shifted in a way that the, the wealth is being transferred from all the people who are stuck in the old paradigm. And the wealth is being given to people who are already hooked into the new paradigm. That's why a kid who started minting Bitcoin in the background of him playing video games is a billionaire. And the billionaire who actually at one, I gotta, I gotta find this guy's name. The billion who was, billionaire who was actually one of the richest people in the world, the richest person in the world in like the 70s or something, is liquidating his yachts. And he doesn't even realize why. He has business models that are hooked into the old world. Secondly, if you have one way of making money, it's over for you. One way of making money is no longer the, if you, do, if you do a job and that is your only source of making money, it's over. Jobs are done. We have an AI now called DALI2. You ask it to make whatever you want. It creates photorealistic representation, 100,000 of them in a second. You retype the words, it redoes it. You want art, done. You want, you want and it's photorealistic. Like, it's so photorealistic that it understands light, it understands things that they haven't even taught it. So, if you're an artist, incorporate that into your workflow. Otherwise, that thing's here to take your job. If you're a lawyer, we don't need you anymore. We, we code the laws. If you're an accountant, bye-bye. If you're somebody who just works, does random stuff, bye-bye. If you're not a creator, not even a creative, a creator, this new world will not have a space for you. So either, either you become a creator or you learn to transition your wealth from this old world space to this new world space. I know it's scary. I know it's a roller coaster. It goes like this. But remember, it goes like this and then it goes like this and then it goes like this. And, you know, it's like 2,000% up, 90% down, 95% down, 20,000% up. No, it goes 20,000% up, 
90% down. 5,000% up, 90% down. 1,000% up, 90% down. Or 80% down, 70% down. And over time, these waves will balance out. And we're so early to the space, it's not even funny. We're, we are buying the internet in 1997. That's where we are today. That's it. Good stuff. Good news. The other secret we have is love. We have love. I see the richest, the richest people on the planet. I've met them. They're miserable. They're just horrendously miserable. You know? We're not. We love. We're the luckiest people on the planet. And I'll leave you on this thought. This is a quote from a billionaire. He said, if you have 30 years to live, you have 1 billion seconds left to live, at least. Every billionaire in the world would trade you all of their money for that 1 billion seconds. Because they know they can make all of their money back, no problem. But they can't get the billion seconds. So you are the wealthiest person I've ever met. You know the wealthiest person I've ever met? He's a farmer. Not even a farmer. Booty. Booty's the wealthiest person I've ever met. He doesn't have money in his bank account. But he has, first of all, love that like shoots out from his heart and blinds people. He has like love high beams turned on. He has swaths of food forests that he's just handing to people. That's where I'm building my land. And that's where we're building sanctuaries for people who are going to be fleeing the shit show that's happening, that's about to start. The real shit show is about to start. And, and when you meet him, he's cooking on two bricks like this. Doesn't even have a third brick on this side. And you meet him and you think like, oh, booty. So sad. You have no money in your bank account. You're living in a forest. Two bricks. Oh, booty. And then you walk up to the top of the forest and you see, what is it, about 25 of his 130 cars? He just likes buying cars. And then you slowly walk forward a little farther and then you get to Booty's triple story villa that has a 360 wraparound glass view at the top that he just uses as a gym because he doesn't know what, to, what else to do with it. Doesn't have any money in the bank account though. Then you jump on a motorcycle with Booty. He jumps on his ninja while you jump on your scooter. You try to follow Booty along. You follow him to Uber to his shops where he has piles of a type of wood called agar wood that is guarded by the military that is illegal to have because the oil from it sells for $100,000 a kilo. He has a quarter room full of this wood that when you meet him, he just breaks it off and hands it to you and goes, I like you, here you go, give this to your friends, burn it, it smells nice. And he is the one who invented those art pieces that you see where it's like wood with glass blown on top. He started that game in 1993. But he doesn't have any money in the bank. He's the wealthiest person I've ever met. And you know what he chooses? And the happiest, that's what I mean, wealthiest. He has the most amount of love. Nobody doesn't just love Booty, right? Booty's figured out the game. Booty's, but you know what he chooses? To go to the forest, put his two little bricks down, and then set a fire, and take a cacao from here, and a coconut from here. Literally, literally, there's a cacao tree here, and then he'll put it down and he'll climb up a coconut tree and grab the coconut from here. And, 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 in the, and while getting there, we're just beating drums like, hey, 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 oh, oh. we're just like dancing to go get this coconut, cacao, right? And then he, on the way back, he grabs some mulberries, sits down on the fire, makes you the best cacao from his own land. And this cacao crushes any cacao you've ever had because it's fresh. That is wealth, ladies and gentlemen. That is wealth. Love, time, autonomy, and the money follows him. The money follows, he piles it up. And the moment the money comes in, he spends it. He doesn't care. Because Booty started with zero dollars in his bank account. Booty had literally the shirt on his back at one point. Booty is the money. You are the money. Okay? The opportunity is being given to you. Do not fuck this up. Pick the 10% of assets that are worth mine. Make good decisions, and I will see you on your private jet. Please, please invite me. Thank you for your time. See you guys next time. All right. Um, on thurs Thursday? Tomorrow. Tomorrow, we're going to be at Park Ubud. Uh, we have a booth and games and food.
and gifts for all you guys. Come down, hang out with us. We're going to be having some fun and talking to some amazing PC. The, the Bali Blockchain Ecosystem Conference is happening tomorrow at Park Ubud. Please come down. You especially, you too. Yeah, because I need, I need, I need, because we're setting up incubators here. Yeah, so our way of moving into this future is to build places that are such beautiful lifestyles based on love and care for the people who are creating the future that we want and providing them the space, the money, the funding, the consulting, the everything they need to manifest their projects. Park Ubud is one of the locations, Bali Blockchain Center is another location, and then we're building locations across the world in every country, eventually, that you'll be able to access simply because you're one of the creators who's part of this whole process. Come down, meet, meet the right people. I think it'll be really good. Yeah, there's a... Oh, right, right, right. When is that? August 9th? Yeah, yeah. Where is it? Okay. And August 9th, we're doing a party here in Changu. Gathering, hangout, where you get to meet our CEO for the Real Earth Elements mining tokenization project. Uh, come hang out. We'll have some good food, some good fun. Uh, ask questions. He's going to come to your house for a barbecue, you know. Yeah. And then. All right. Friday, we're presenting. We have a meeting from two to four where we're going to be presenting access to a new revenue stream that we have called real estate. I just talked all this shit about real estate, but we're going to build it here. No, it's going to be. Uh, is it here? It's here. Yeah, it's here. For real estate. Because the whole, the whole point of like, when I said that you need more, more ways to make money, there's people providing real st or revenue streams in all the different spaces. And what we do this regularly, we launch new revenue streams for people and pool capital together from investors and be able to invest in things. So we're going to be building and we're going to be building and selling real estate using an existing system. We'll explain all the details. Please join, come hang out. Uh, and if you're not part of our communities, Please join, please see Gozion or scan this to join our Telegram community. Scan this to get in touch with us if you want consulting or you want to hang out. Um, scan this to get to the, to the YouTube channel. And if you're watching this and you're wondering how to contact us beyond all this stuff and you're watching this on your phone and you can't scan these, message at Excel Assistant on Telegram and, or go to the website excellenceconsulting.co. Uh, and get in touch with us. But thank you guys. Won't take up much more of your time.